Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in. Uh, for everybody that's been sending love, uh, who knows what I'm going through, and you've been sending love, man, it is appreciated. The prayers are appreciated. The advice and the words of encouragement are appreciated. Uh, I love you guys. Uh, it means so much. Uh, for those of you who know me personally and you're feeling me right now and you're literally, literally carrying uh, my pain, I love you and I appreciate you. Um, now, moving on to this. Also, uh, we are still in the middle of a fundraiser. Uh, I definitely want to uh, in, in encourage you and challenge you to support the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project and to support our work. The links are in the description box. We're in the middle of a fundraiser. I, I tell you this all the time. Look, we need your support. We need to get to a point where we are literally providing the things that are necessary to do what is required. Uh, I've talked about the work, so you know it's there. Matter of fact, I'm about to talk about some of it now. But uh, just got a story last night in the Houston area. Uh, actually, not that far from where one of my sisters lived. Uh, a 16-year-old high school sophomore was held captive by her mother's boyfriend and then ultimately shot to death. Uh, still trying to gather the details trying to find out what's going on but it's just one in so many stories where our youth aren't being protected um, we definitely have a problem and the response isn't so much a response as it is a reaction Reactions come when you are not conditioned, trained, and have protocols in place. So you react to things. You don't respond. Response is a positive movement to help resolve issues and to correct situations. We don't respond to things. We react to them. And it's because we have not effectively engaged in understanding what's going on, first of all, knowing how things work, second of all, and developing strategies, protocols, and um programs that allow you to address issues. Uh, so much of what's going on in the community is preventable. So much of what we're dealing with almost in every socioeconomic category, every political category, uh, every, every academic category, there is preventable measures that can be taken uh, that can reduce uh, the severity of what we're facing. And, and in many instances, uh, lower it extremely uh, to an extreme level, extremely low level, but it requires an awareness. It requires a consistency and engagement. It requires the need, it, the, the action uh, to step in and say, okay, not on my watch. I've been doing that for years, but what I find out, it, it is so hard to get my people engaged. It's so hard to get my people involved. It's so hard to get my people to sit up and say, let's go make it happen. It's so hard. We get wired up for concerts. We get wired up. Uh, we, you know, we'll get together, you know, if we want to react to something, we'll get together and uh, we come together in large numbers to go tear some shit up. But that doesn't solve the problem. It says we're angry. I have said this so many times. I'm going to say it again. Protests that are not backed by action, that is not backed by economic response, that is not backed by a plan that will bring about discomfort to those who are causing the problem is nothing but a collective temper tantrum. It is just one way of showing someone that we are angry. People don't care about you being angry. People care about what are you going to do about what made you angry. And as long as all you're going to do is throw temper tantrums, people don't care. Because if they're benefiting from your, from your discomfort, they'll take you tearing up some stuff. They'll take you out there. And then they'll use that against you. They'll sit up and say, that's all they do. 
That's all they do is they go out there and they tear up stuff. They'll tear up stuff in their own neighborhood. Uh, they, they, but they're not going to take any real action. They're not going to do anything to change things. They're not going to be catalysts for change. They're not going to be actively engaged and involved in doing something for them. So that's not what they do. They, they go tear up stuff. Now, I know why you're out there tearing up stuff. I know the frustration. I know the pain. I know the rage that's and where it's coming from. They know. But see, because they have plans, because they have think tanks, because they literally finance their movements, a lot of times with our dollars. But because they have those things, they don't have to respond. They can literally write a new narrative to why we're doing it to make it look like it's us, to make it look like it's our fault. Our children are out there killing ourselves, young African-American adolescent and young adult males are killing themselves. Now, from what I understand, uh, the guy who killed this baby was her mother's boyfriend, and I think he was 60. So this isn't so much about young black males, but this is about a problem of not protecting youth. The ones who should be the most protected in the community are seeming, seemingly the most exposed. We're losing far too many of them. We're losing far too many of them to violence, but we're also losing a lot of them to suicide. We won't talk about it. We won't deal with it. We we, we, we can hit that, that oh my God, and the, the, the crying face emoji and all of the stuff on social media that's that has conditioned us over the years to respond with an emotional response and think that's actually doing something. It's not doing anything. You literally have to invest your time, invest your money, invest your mind and your brain, invest in connecting and doing something with other people who are actually committed to making change. That's how it happens. I've been in this game for a long time. I've taken so many bumps and bruises because I go to war. I go to war. I've got school districts and colleges right now I'm at war with. I've got a couple of sheriff's departments I'm at war with. And I mean, Dr. Blanchard alone, I mean, we go hard in the paint for our people. And so we know what's out there. We know how to deal with it. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is that so much of what we see on a national level is preventable. Uh, we can literally mitigate a lot of the violence through, through proper socializations, proper racial socialization, which is why I created and designed uh, the Black Man Lead Rite of Passage Initiative. We can deal with mental health issues without involving the police. Uh, that's why we created wraparound services that include mental health resources, that includes job training, skills training, uh, help with finding uh, employment, and so much more. There is a way to address all these issues. There's a way to address the gap in education. I'm not talking about academic achievement. I'm talking about education. See, one of the problems we have, we look at the thing like I've talked about uh, the self-hatred thing, how we are trying so hard to fit a mold that tells us we're beautiful because we don't see the beauty in ourselves because we are being defined by social media. We're being defined by a system that does not respect us, a system that does not love us, a system that cannot uh, receive us. But the same, the people that, uh, uh, the same people, this, the, the people that are in the same system will go out of their way to look like us while maligning us looking like us. They see the beauty but they don't want you to know you're beautiful. They're mimicking and doing everything they can to have what you have while trying to convince you what you have isn't good enough. And it's our responsibility to ensure that our children know who they are long before they're ever exposed to the world and put in a situation where they're going to have to face uh, ridicule and uh, degradation and so much more. We have a responsibility to ourselves. We have a responsibility to our children. We have a responsibility to future generations. Uh, we need help. I told you uh, in a video earlier when I was being transparent about what it is I'm really facing and what I'm dealing with and what I'm going through right now. Uh, I got some time on my hands uh, now and that's I'm, I'm going hard in um, to address this issue. I'm, go I'm gonna bury myself in my work 
and I would really love to have the resources to take this thing to the next level. I would love to take black men lead on a national network tour to teach people in each community, starting with major cities, picking a 20 city tour for the first year and going in and spending several weeks in each city and teaching leaders in the community how to work this program, how to engage boys, how to use the adolescence, uh, res the African-American adolescent respect scale, which was created actually by, by Dr. Joy DeGru. Uh, it's, it's a way of predicting uh, when a child, a black male child is likely to uh, be at risk of committing violence and then you can use the programs and the mechanisms and the techniques and everything that I've created to help mitigate that but at the same time you're socializing them into an identity of understanding who they are and what's expected of them you're giving them a place in our society you're giving them a responsibility in our society you're giving them a name outside of thug outside of hoodlum, outside of criminal, outside of dumb, outside of stupid, outside of all the things that are constantly hurled at them without understanding that they too yearn to have a place in this world. And if we don't give it to them, they go out in the best way they can and they take it. And normally we all pay the price. It's time to see the value in our young boys so that they will respect the value in our daughters. That's something else that we don't see, that these young boys that are coming up are eventually going to be the men that are exposed, our daughters are exposed to. What are we preparing in, 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 to, 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 to be able to have our daughters engage? There's so much social responsibility that has been quashed because of individualism and selfishness that has to stop matter of fact if you are in a city and i know that people in chicago reached out before if you're still out there reach out again uh, uh i know uh my sister ava down in uh charlotte uh wilmington delaware atl i know tiff's going on to pop i know that dr uh blanchard we're going to have south florida covered uh texas is on lock already uh, down in, out in California, we need uh, Southern Cal covered. Uh, we need the Bay Area covered. Uh, we're starting there. Uh, Chi Town, I, I think I already said you guys. Um, you know, so when I talk about Chi Town, I'm talking about Chi Town. I'm talking about uh, Gary, uh, which is real big. Uh, and then obviously, I got a couple of people in Detroit that are talking about getting me up there. Uh, make it happen. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. But these are the things I would love to do is come and personally integrate people into understanding how socialization works, how a rite of passage works. And ultimately what I want to do after we get it into the major cities is create networks from those cities into the smaller towns that surround those cities and ultimately get it into the black home. And what I mean by that is it should be an understood practice within the black home that this is how you socialize young black males. And, and over time, we create a natural and organic process that you see in other communities like the Jewish community. <clears throat> That's all a bar mitzvah is, is a celebration of a young Jewish boy completing his rite of passage. <clears throat> we need to be able to do that. So in essence, I am going to really and truly challenge you. Look in that description box, click the link show some support commit to some long-term things we've got to make some things happen um if you don't want to give by clicking the link the organization has a cash app account the, the uh cash app handle is inside look uh inside the description box as well it's time to make a difference and i'm challenging every last one of you. once again to everybody that's been showing me love today you are appreciated you are loved in return we've got work to do Let's make it happen. I'm out of here. Peace.